Welcome back to Just Blazer Programming. And before I get started on this video, I'd like to say thank you for the 500 subs. I'll be sure to do something special. But before I do that, I'd like to explain a little something about my channel. Now, every, you know, this is a very small channel right now. So whenever I get the chance to, I do go out of my way to answer your questions in the comments section, or at least give the little, you know, heart and the likes and all that stuff, because I do read your comments and sometimes I do answer them, uh, answer them. If you're asking me a question, a technical question or whatever. Um, in this case, this is one of the technical questions that I wanted to make a video about because I thought it was a really good question in the sense that I didn't, uh, I forgot this was an oversight on my part because when I was making the event binding video, I didn't add this in. And when I made the forms video, I only really went with one way data binding. I didn't actually teach you how to use the actual, um, how to do a change event within an edit form. And I think that's really important because if you're going to be using forms and maybe you like to be doing extra stuff in them and, you know, activate events whenever you want, whenever someone does something. So in this video, we're going to go for a very simple example on how to implement this. So um, if you have any questions to ask me in the future and you would think that it's a really good question and you are cool with me showing your, your username and the question, because I would like to give you credit for that question. Uh, let me know in the comment section when you ask your technical question and I will know not to, that it's okay to actually show your name and the comments out there. If you don't, then, um, I will assume that you don't want to, and I won't show it like I'm doing here. I'm not going to give the person, unfortunately, I can't give you any credit, sir, but just know that you know who you are out there. And I thank you for this question. Now let's get started. Welcome back everybody. So the caveat here is that if you don't know how to do data binding and you don't know what a form is and how to use it, I'm not going to really go over the basics of that because I've already made videos devoted to it and they're still helpful here. What I'm doing is I'm just going to add to your knowledge and how to do the on change events within the form. So if you have issues following along here, then I recommend looking at either my event binding video. You have an issue with that, or if you want, go look at the actual forms and validation video that I've already prepared. So in this case, we are going to need to create a form. So in order to do that, we need our edit form component here. And then all forms need a model. There you go. So a model just has to be a class that exists that we have access to. So in this case, um, let's not use that. That's for another tutorial that we don't care about. But in case you're just using a new project, you have already two classes prepared. Sure, we can make our own classes as well, but I'm being a little lazy. So just to also show you something else along the way about what I'm about to do. So what we're going to do is just use the weather forecast class, but actually we need this first. The first thing we need to do is import our directive here. Is that it? Oh, approach not. Oh wait, that's, oh, that's, that's probably why. I forgot to put the uh, search. Okay, resemble her huh? dot data. Okay, now we should have access to the weather forecast class. Weather, yep. Now, this doesn't matter because we're not going to be submitting anything. Oh, oh I, actually, no, this does matter, but not in this case. We're not going to be submitting anything. So we need to create a, an object from this class. So whether, well, I didn't probably paste it. Weather forecast, call it weather equals new. I believe that is the new shorthand way of doing this. I'm used to the old way. So then that should allow that to work perfect. So we're going to first start off with an input. Oh, no. Input number with a capital I that will be referring to the component. Perfect. So now we have our input number. So when we open this up, we're going to have, um, you know, something that we could put something in there. It's complaining now because we don't have uh, any types in here, but we're going to put that now. So let's put in our first type, which is going to be very simple in number equals zero. I'm not going to go through the process of using the lifecycle methods in this case. I don't think that they're very necessary here, obviously, for this example. And they'll just get in the way in case you're wondering why I'm not using 
going on in initialize or whatever. So, but we will have a need for a function because the whole point of this is to create an on change event. So, punk. And. And you know what? We'll add also a variable here as well. Value. So whatever number value we get, we're going to increase it by one. And then the number is going to be set to that number value. That's going to be what this input number is going to do. This will show you not only how to pass data into it. So if you want to pass data, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. And how to do the change func as well. So first, we have to bind a value into our input. And that value is going to be the number here. So just number. Now it, it's all happy because we have at least bi bound this number to something. It's not going to check for the model until later. So we could actually get away with doing this for now. So pretend that this is some actual model that is refers to this. We just don't really need it for here. We don't need any of the extra stuff that comes with it. We just needed to make sure that this compiles. So that is why I'm not doing anything with the, with the model. And then we're going to have the at on input is equal to, and then you write this as you would write any other delegate or function or whatever here. This, I believe I go over this in the data binding video of how to do this. Come on. That's going to be interesting. So the number goes in here, number value plus equals one. That changes the number. And then I hope this doesn't do an infinite loop, but we'll see. We'll have some fun finding out because I haven't actually tested this out like this. I did some other function before, but I'm curious now. And you're going to see how my brain works when it comes to these sorts of things. All righty. Here we go. Okay, so it's not, at least it's not in front loop, but every time I, I try to put a number like seven, or I just put any number in here, it's just gonna keep incrementing it. Doesn't really matter what I do. The reason for that is because, so as you can see, I am calling on the change function. And every time the binding, it's because uh, what you don't know is that if you don't have this here, it's just gonna naturally change the number to whatever because it's doing in the background a change event as well. So you don't have to do this if you don't want it to do something special like adding uh, whatever I'm doing here. So it's not working as intended it seems as every time I have an input, it takes whatever the number is that's already existing, adds one to it, and then that number becomes whatever the, and then the new number becomes that. So it doesn't matter what I put in. It just takes in from the older value. Ooh, so I could be doing something like this. And it'll just increment by one all the time. But them's the breaks. That's what happens when you know, test your code. You get that to happen. But there's also, I'm just going to try an input, uh, the input text as well as promised, but this time I'm just gonna copy paste. And then we're going to make public string, new string. That should, yup. So what this will do is anytime I write a number in, it's just going to change it to test. It doesn't care what you put in. 
also might help if I do one of these. So I stop the program and then rerun it. Now there's two. So this one, it doesn't matter what I write. It's going to change it to test. So every time it goes, uh, it has an on input, it has like a little delay. So I could add this in there, get out, but then when I try adding it back in, it's gonna go convert that number, that that string to to test or something. So I just did these to show you that you can do unfunction. Obviously, you're gonna probably write a function that actually has functionality and not just you know a lot of BS here. But this does show you that you could use your on input within the edit form and on basically any one of the different components they're in. I know there's a bit like when it comes to like input file and stuff like that, there's a bit of a difference there. And you know, but for the other ones, it's basically just doing this. And if you need a function to pass in values, it works the same exact way as the other data binding um, example I've shown with or without it. This is basically the best way to do it if you just want it to work um, without wondering whether or not it will work. As long as you have a delegate in there, you're good with that. And if you want to have a number, you can do that. Just make sure that when you write your code, it actually makes sense. and not just a bunch of stuff you made up on the fly just to show off this example. So basically, that's all there is to this. Because uh, the most important part is just firing off that change function. And um, that's, that's it. That's how you would do it within this edit form uh, component. And the model did nothing because we're not passing in anything. We're not validating anything. So it's not asking for anything in return. So that's why I could use any model as long as it's a class somewhere to do this example on. And that's all there is to it. So if you have any other questions, thoughts, or concerns on the video, this was a very quick one. I'd like to answer questions on this. And if you, again, if you have a question that seems really good and I like it, and you're cool with me showing your name and your comment off, let me know because I like to show it. So that's all there is to it. This was a very quick video and thank you for watching. Thanks again for 500 subs. Don't worry, I'll be doing something very special as soon as I can. Trust me.